for an endless, enduring dream and a thousand points of light. 25 years ago, we had George Bush, Millie Vanilli, and a lot more hair. And in the American West, battles raged over old growth forests. We go directly to one of the most contentious issues, the national forest. In the mountains of northern Washington, money grows on trees. This area is the Northwest was seeing some of the most destructive logging in its history, with the U.S. Forest Service allowing clear-cutting of old growth in Washington and Oregon at a rate of about two square miles per week. Wildlife was disappearing or gone. Many species faced extinction. The Forest Service is managing our public lands like an exclusive club. And, you know, you can't get in with just a checkbook. You need a chainsaw. But a small group of folks didn't just get mad. They got organized. I was a young activist in the middle of the ancient forest wars, and I felt the need to think bigger. Most Americans aren't even aware that our national forests are cut. So I called some friends that I knew shared my interest in bringing more science and a bigger, bolder landscape view of conservation in the Northwest to protect and connect the large wild areas so that they can sustain wolves and wolverines and all the native wildlife that's really our birthright here. We thought about how we could tell that story and make it real. We decided to bring a giant tree to the country. We would pull into a town and drive right up for the city park across the street from the newspaper. But we were on the front page. Yeah. Papers around the country, CNN. Through organizing and legal tactics, we had a breakthrough. The Northwest Forest Plan and the permanent protection of old growth forests on federal lands. We became a group that learned how to make government work better. Meanwhile, on state-owned land, habitat for endangered wildlife was still being lost at an alarming rate. The Loomis Forest, a last stronghold for lynx, was on the chopping block. Conservation Northwest did something no one had ever done before. I don't think anybody expected us to win that battle, but ultimately we raised more than $18 million, enough to pay for the protection of 25,000 acres of roadless lynx habitat. It's super cool that we were able to protect the Loomis Forest, but those lynx are isolated, and unless that population is connected through habitat corridors, then the future will be short for those lynx. One of the major bottlenecks in habitat is the I-90 corridor. The Cascades are one of the most north-south important corridors for wildlife to move. All of us played that game Frogger at one point in our life. And if you think about an animal trying to get across those lanes, it's difficult. Conservation Northwest pulled together a formidable coalition, raising an astonishing $78 million in private and public funds, protecting 45,000 acres from logging and leading to wildlife passages under and over I-90. Two wildlife overpasses in the I-90 project. These are 150 foot wide bridges that are fully vegetated with native trees and shrubs from the landscape surrounding them. So we have three underpasses constructed as of today and the story is already unfolding that all of them are working. Wildlife does not have any inherent set of people who lobby for them. By default, I think they could get a really raw deal without the efforts of organizations like Conservation Northwest. With habitat being protected and reconnected, wildlife is returning. In 2008, the remote camera program captured photos of the lookout pack, the first breeding wolves in Washington in over 70 years, following the return of wolverine and the reintroduction of fishers in Olympic National Park. These are not only the first wolves recorded by camera coming back to Washington, but they're actually wolves reproducing in our state. That is tremendous. It's hard to feel small or isolated or marginal or unempowered when you think about the hundreds of people that come out volunteering to replant trees around Gold Creek in the I-90 corridor or maintain our remote cameras in some of the farthest, coldest reaches of the Cascades. Or when I think about every year the people I see at our auction raising paddles with amounts that are uh, amazing to me. What makes us possible is this community of support. We share a passion and a love for the wild of the Northwest. It's a way for you to have a very tangible impact on the legacy for not just for you but for your children because these things that are being done today, they really do have an impact.
I think Conservation Northwest really is focused on creating solutions that are going to stick and really work for the long run. This year, I'm going to make a bigger donation than I've made in the past. It's my way of recognizing our 25 years of success and helping to position us for another 25 years of success in the future.